You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Here's a look at some of the major stories from across the state of Montana tonight. Flooding continues to plague several areas of our state, shutting down roads and trapping people in their homes. We'll have the latest details. Plus an update on a sexual abuse case surrounding a former Lewis and Clark County Sheriff's deputy. But first, Anaconda continues to fight to keep its Job Corps office open. Well, the future is unknown for the Job Corps Center in Anaconda after the U.S. Department of Labor threatened to shut down the program along with others nationwide. As MTN's John Amy found out, city leaders say there could be a way to save it if everyone gets involved. After more than 50 years in the community, Anaconda is ready to fight to save its Job Corps. The Job Corps is something this community cannot lose. What they contribute to our community is uh, beyond words. Last week, the U.S. Department of Labor announced it was closing the Anaconda Job Corps in September. The organization, which provides job training for teens in numerous fields, has helped Anaconda in many ways, including during this winter's devastating snowstorm. Uh, they showed up with 50 uh, kids helping out. They dug out all the fire hydrants, they dug out people's driveways, Park, uh, stuck cars they helped out with. They were absolutely tremendous. Losing the Job Corps would also have a devastating impact on Anaconda's economy. There are 70 full-time good paying jobs up there. We can't lose those. And we have 200 students up there right now. Those students, they spend a lot of time in our community, at our movie theater, at our bowling alleys, at our stores. The battle to save the Anaconda Job Corps will ultimately be fought in Washington, D.C., but the chief executive said he still needs the community of Anaconda to rally our congressman. There's several petitions going on. You've seen some on Facebook. We've got people going around town doing petitions as well, and I'm urging people to pick up the phone, call Danes, call Tester, call Gia Forti, and let them know, gosh darn it, we need this. In Anaconda, John Amy, MTN News. And a town meeting is planned to draw what officials say could be some positive support for saving the Job Corps program. While well, flooding remains a major issue in Montana tonight, we spoke to a Vaughn resident trapped from high water levels in her driveway. There's a current. <laughs> and while there might be a few potholes too to fix, she says she is grateful for friends able to help out in the meantime. I had good friends that have been bringing in stuff to us because it's just me and my friend taking care of a couple grandchildren right now. 100 east of Sun River remains underwater, but the flood levels have already receded since yesterday. Some residents say water from the Sun River did rise high enough to get into some of their buildings. The Medicine River fishing access also remains closed. The newly opened Cooney State Park has been closed since late Tuesday because of flooding. Water flowing out of the Cooney into the spillway and the boat ramps and campgrounds all around the reservoir are closed. Park management say some roads were flooded yesterday. People were getting around the reservoir but not into picnic areas and campgrounds. Some still enjoyed fishing and others found other places to relax. Many roads remain closed as floodwaters continue to recede across the Rocky Mountain front. Augusta and northern Lewis and Clark County were among the hardest hit. Crews reopened Highway 287 between Augusta and Highway 200, the main road into town from the south. We'll take a look at this. These are the roads along the Rocky Mountain front closed and impassable tonight. Officials say other roads are only open for those who live in the area. An update on a sexual abuse case surrounding a former Lewis and Clark County Sheriff's deputy as he appears in court to face charges. Virgil Wolf pled guilty to charges accusing him of taking nude photos of an underage victim and uploading them to a computer. Police found child pornography on electronic device that Wolf previously used. Sentencing will take place August 29th. Design plans are nearly complete for a new 56,000 square foot Bozeman Law and Justice Center. 
the current Law and Justice Center will be demolished and the new one built in its place. The new facility will connect to the detention center as well. The project was delayed by a lawsuit, you might remember this, involving lawmaker Roger Koopman, who said the process misled the public. County officials say they are moving ahead. Previous iteration when we were with the city, we had two buildings. So with this one building, we're actually able to save uh, another footprint on the Law and Justice campus. So it uh, extends the life of the campus over there probably for another 75 years or better. And the county plans to have a price tag for the project in July. Voters will be weighing in on a ballot initiative. It's going to be next November during the general election. A November, uh, a, a Democrat state senator, I should say, from Missoula, says he's running for Montana Secretary of State. Bryce Bennett is the first Democrat to announce a run for the seat in 2020. Bennett says he is a leading advocate for voters and access to voting. Bennett has a record of sponsoring bills to make it easier for voters to return absentee ballots. The current Secretary of State, Corey Stapleton, is running for governor next year. A Yellowstone National Park concession employee is recovering tonight after being injured by a cow elk at Mammoth Hot Springs. It happened in the developed area of Mammoth at 6.30 this morning. The female employee was taken to a local hospital, but her condition is unknown. Park officials say visitors should stay 25 feet away from wildlife as elk calves are often bedding near buildings and vehicles. And biologists haze that cow elk out of the area where it was reunited with its calf. New developments tonight as a second water treatment plant for water in the Berkeley pit is proposed. The Atlantic Richville Company intends to build the new plant off of Shields Avenue. It's designed to pull more toxic water from the pit. If there's a breach in the dam that holds water in the tailings pond, this plant would prevent overflow. And that is to build a redundant water treatment plant for the Berkeley pit that would be used um, to draw the, the water in the pit down in the highly unlikely event there was ever a dam breach. And if the Environmental Protection Agency approves the project, that new plant could be ready by the year 2021. Roads in Bozeman are becoming increasingly worn, and city officials believe rapid growth may have something to do with that. City engineers say road work is a careful science, and roads are designed to accommodate light and heavy traffic. But the increase in people means an increase in traffic. The roads, they say, were never designed to handle that. A car, for example, has a different impact on a road than an 18-wheeler trailer. So, and, and so much so that the impact of an 18-wheeler trailer, fully loaded, is 3,000 times the impact of a car. A Bozeman Street online mapping program has all of the latest construction projects from all across the city. A Bozeman man could spend the rest of his life in prison after investigators say he raped his ex-wife and said he dug a grave for her. Adam Karp faces several other charges, including assault with a weapon. Court documents say the violence took place over the course of several years, including a time when Karp fired a gun into the wall during a fight. Investigators also say he threw a candle at his now ex-wife's face when his dinner wasn't prepared correctly. He faces up to 100 years in prison. New information surrounding an alleged attack with a taser gun as a Manhattan man is now in custody. The attack happened at a gas station and witnesses say after the attack, the suspect got in his car, drove away and then came back to the scene. In court, prosecutors say he used the same taser on his mother back a few months ago. He now faces up to 10 years in prison. Some promising news when it comes to the safety, though, of Montana's communities, as Attorney General Tim Fox announces Project Safe Neighborhoods is working. Fox says the project is showing positive results in Missoula County. Criminal prosecutions are up, ranging from drug offenses and violent offenders. And looking ahead to year two, Fox says they'll use a more analytic approach to combat crimes. A year ago, this group made clear, if you commit armed robbery, push meth or commit a firearms offense, you will be arrested and you will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And on top of that positive turnout from the program, police say they are looking into combating 
violent crimes specifically going forward. Schools in the Flathead Valley are responding to a rise in school violence nationwide by adding special safety measures. New barriers like this one that you'll see at Whitefish Middle School aim to keep students and faculty safe. A few months ago, that 10 foot wall glass was installed. It's designed to keep students and visitors separate while visitors check in at the front office. There is a barrier to it that makes it shatterproof. So if uh, an object were to be thrown at it, it wouldn't just shatter to the bottom. It would just, it would hold together. Uh, not bulletproof, uh, still welcoming and, and fits the design of what we have inside. And all staff at Whitefish Middle School are trained in case of an active shooter incident. Montana, it seems, is not meeting a nationwide standard when it comes to child care, ranking 40th in the nation for dependable child care. Today in Helena, business owners, experts, and state leaders met to discuss those challenges. Right now, child care resources only meet 40% of state demand. So leaders are coming together to take a hard look at Montana's early childhood system. We know that having access to high quality child care is really important to parents and families so that their kids can get a great start in life. But we also know that uh, with workforce participation rates um, higher than ever and unemployment as low as ever, we really need um, for employers to be able to have access to those employees and when they have to leave the workforce because of the cost of child care or because they can't afford child care, um, that's a detriment to our economy. So Help is available for those who do need child care throughout the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services. Oh, still to come on tonight's MTN 9 o'clock news, the Helena Police Department gets a new program rolling and it's a long time coming for an MDT employee as he retires. Well, it looks like most of the rain has stopped. We still have some flooding to deal with, and now it looks like we're going to start to see some smoke from a distant fire make its way into the region. We'll have more than that coming your way in a few more minutes.